apparently I logged in just in time for a dominating victory. Hey guys, SDO Youngblood, um, playing one of my least played characters. Uh, this is a, a TR character. And what I wanted to do in this episode of Yawing and Jawing is actually put on a... Let's go with a bone stock... Uh, well, not bone stock. I'm going to give myself flares at least. Um, uh, almost bone stock, uh, you know, mozzie. And we'll just kind of go from there. Um, basically, I know we've got a lot of people out there that have kind of asked to see this type of footage, and I want to go ahead and oblige. So, um, let's see how we do in this little endeavor. All right. Um, so I'm back from my conference. It was, a uh, it was pretty busy. Um, it was a great couple days. I'd never been to Seattle, so it was kind of fun getting up there to actually see the town and, you know, see what a conference was all about and all that kind of good stuff. I am a little bit behind on work stuff and in, uh, and stuff around the house, so if you... or vehicles. Videos are still going to be a little bit scarce. Well, not scarce, but less frequent than you've become accustomed to until I get caught up with everything. So I just wanted to give you guys a heads up about that. Uh, now, as far as... What you can expect with yawing and jawing. I put a comment in the last video, uh, and it was actually just letting you guys know that uh, Maddie Ace and I are going to be doing one of these uh, together, where we're going to be doing a dual live com. Uh, and I want to know what sort of questions you guys have, because we'll try our best to answer those and uh, you know get you guys uh, responses. And I'm curious to see what sort of questions you guys come up with. Like maybe you know. Maddie feels one way about something, and I feel one way or a different way about it. And you want to see if you can get us into a little discussion, or if you just don't like my answers on something and you want to get somebody else's opinion. I'm interested to see how that all plays out because I think it could be a fun uh, little series. If you guys don't know Maddie, he's a uh, he's a very good player, um, very good pilot specifically. He um, he plays on a, a bunch of different servers. Oh, there we go. There you go. It's possible to get kills. So yeah, he's a good player. If you don't know him, uh, I'll put one of his videos in the outro so you guys can go and uh, check him out. Uh, but yeah, I would suggest it because he puts out content on a regular basis. Um, and it'll be good to kind of talk together. Now, we've never flown as wingmen before, so I'm interested to see how we play together. Knowing the fact that we haven't personally flown together see what sort of a uh, dynamic we can pull whether it's uh you know whether we're effective or not effective uh you know and it'll give you guys an idea because a lot of situations you may not have outfit mates online to play with and you're just going to be relying on other wingmen and it might kind of highlight how you can be more effective with or without the uh you know, with or without uh communications and now we're obviously going to be communicating so it's going to be a little bit different but uh, you know, maybe it'll at least kind of highlight that. And I think that's something I'm going to try and do with this channel, is kind of do a few dual comms. So one, you're not only just listening to me, you're listening to, you know, different opinions. Um, and I may even extend it a little bit. Maybe instead of yawing and jawing, it'll be like, uh, steering and jeering. Where I'll uh, talk with one of my outfit mates, like uh, Omega Doom, who's one of the best uh, harasser drivers I've ever seen. I think I've mentioned him before. But maybe we can talk about tips and tricks on how we can... Uh, you know, how he's so successful in his recommended setups and builds. So that's a direction you'll probably see this going. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to get out there real quick was that uh, you're probably going to see some Battlefield 4 footage on this channel uh, when it comes time for that game being released. And I'll be in the beta, so assuming there's not some crazy uh, NDA, you'll probably start seeing some of that footage. Now, knowing that... Who is shooting what down here? That sounds like an ESF. Um, knowing that, I want you guys just to know that, you know, I'm a gamer just like anybody else. And right now, while I typically play a whole lot of... Um, well, I typically play a whole lot of Planetside, that's not going to go away on my channel. But I want you guys to know that there is going to be some other stuff that you guys should uh, keep an eye out for. Now, I don't want to hear you guys say, well, Battlefield footage, I'm not sticking around or unsubscribing. I mean, if you feel that way, fine. But, I mean, let's be serious. You know, I play other games. Some of you are going to be interested in Battlefield. If you don't like it, please just don't don't watch it, you know? Ooh, scythe. Um, but, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I don't see it taking the place of uh, Planetside for me, just because I really enjoy what this game has to offer. Uh, and I don't think that what I really like about this game is going to be fulfilled by Battlefield 4. There we 
go. Oh, Reaver wants to play now. Oh god. He just had that crash look to him, didn't he? He just looked like he wanted to plow me. Well, that sounded dirty. Quit trying to tackle me! This is plate inside, not football! I need to see if I can get out of here. No tanks, no tanks, no tanks. These are the times where auto repair would be really nice to have. So, uh, Battlefield content, just be ready to see a little bit of it. I really enjoyed Battlefield 3, but I did get a little burnt out on it, and I would expect that I will probably end up feeling very similar to, uh, very similar with Battlefield 4, because it doesn't look like it's going to be that different. But it's something you're going to see a little bit of, so just keep an eye out for that. Um, the last thing I really wanted to talk about, and I was curious on y'all's opinion on this, is how you feel about the different Empire-specific rocket launchers, specifically since they got changed. You know, we all know that the... Uh, ooh, jumping. We all know that the Phoenix came out, and it was a, the bane of everybody's existence because it was able to do so much damage to infantry, you know, and pretty much one-hit kills, and that's not fun for anybody. Well, except for, obviously, the person using the Phoenix. That got changed pretty damn fast, and while the weapon's still useful, uh, you know, it's definitely not what, what I think anybody would make an argument as being overpowered. Now, the Striker is an issue on its own, and it's been adjusted. And with the adjustments that they've made, I feel like it's a much more reasonable weapon. You know, it's... Now, it's still a pain in the ass, and if you're flying high, that's a problem, but you're able to kind of break locks. And I haven't been up against a ton of them since I've been back. So my opinion may vary on this, but for right now, I think it's at least in a much better place. The Lancer is probably my favorite of the group. I think it's the most fun and unique to use. And I also think... Let's just piss him off and get out of here. And I also happen to think that it's probably the most, you know, skillful weapon and probably the most balanced of the three. That being said, um, you know, it's it's not really fitting a niche of being the obnoxious weapon. It's just kind of fits an interesting role. And while we see a lot of people using it, I don't think it's something that we see a ton of people using. So I want y'all's opinion on the three and how you think they actually fit in with the, just the general balance of this game. Why is there always two? And a Reaver. Oh boy. Now, who was locking him? Basically, what I'm doing is I'm just trying to keep myself revolving around the target, staying out of his targets, especially since I know... Oh, fuck. Sorry for the language. Basically, because I know I don't have a rotary or the advanced air-to-air -air weaponry that he has... Scoot, scoot, scoot! There we go. Man, I wish I had my pimped out ride. <laughs> uh, so you can see, I mean, by flying somewhat smart, you could stay alive long enough using these, but really putting certs into your craft is a beneficial thing. Also, having an upgraded repair tool would be fantastic. But, what can you do? 
All right. So yes. Um, the thoughts on the Empire-specific rocket launchers. Come on. Okay. I've been starting to see footage of the, uh, Nexus Battle Islands popping up on YouTube. Um, and they seem interesting. I'm, uh, you know, I mentioned before, I'm not a huge fan of MLG, so that's not really where my, you know, interests lie. I'm not really looking forward to it as, okay. I'm not looking forward to it in, like, that Battle Islands, like, uh, arena where it's supposed to be, like, you versus, um, where it's supposed to be, you know, your outfit versus another outfit. I mean, yeah, I think that's cool, and it probably fits at least a, somewhat of a niche role. But, what is that? But, um, there we go. Oh, it was a different one. It wasn't even the same one. All right, but I am interested to see how it plays out once we get the other continents. So, uh, that's it for now. Like I said, uh, the big thing I wanted to get across was that I'm going to be doing a dual com. So, if you've got commentaries or questions or thoughts or when you want opinions or advice uh, on anything between weapons or, uh, you know, flying with wingmen advice or differences between ESFs, whatever you guys want to know about flying, this is going to be a great forum to get those questions answered. So, Please go ahead and get those in, uh, and we will probably have that up within the next week or two. So the sooner you get your questions in, the better. So thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Talk to you later.